Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Cornelius presents Building Faith in God's Love, filmed on the 4th of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. I guess I'll get started. Let's welcome my little cute little audience. <laughs> All right. So today I'm going to tell you a bit about. We're going to today's focused on God's all about God. So that's why you guys are here. So we're going to be. I'll be talking about building faith in God's love. So we'll get started. So just going to give you a summary of my life in the first century in regards to this. I'll just put the leaves up for you. So the beginning of, beginning of my life, I was taken away and ended up to a military camp by force, by soldiers, and at the age of five, I ended up suffering a life of physical, emotional and sexual violence in that place. I could never get out of that place. Too. Every day was a constant day of terror. So basically I was a prisoner in that place for all that time until I actually got out. I think I was about 16. It was the first time I walked outside. If I had died in that place, it would have been a, a relief, really. So in that place, we become emotional, I become emotionally sensitised, and even my feelings are shut down by all the violence and things that happened to me. And they end up becoming just a trained killer, basically. That's what they were trying to turn me into, and the others that were there. And, and it took my vengeance out on women, children, men, anybody. I was very angry. So... Having a life like that, how did I find faith in God's love? That's the question, isn't it? It's a question I've been coming up a lot with myself lately in my life. First, I had a lot of shame about finding out about my own identity and what I'd done. As I'm starting to get through a little bit of that, just a little bit of that, I'm starting to realise there's some good parts there about me because I'm back here again. So how did I do that? I must have had quite a strong faith in God because there's still children there who are in that place are still in the house, but I've gone and moved through and had a relationship strongly with God. And in that time when I was on earth, though, too, from a person to the life I lived and had a, a small experience later in my life of faith that changed me dramatically. In fact, even Jesus' followers at that time didn't have as much faith as I actually had in what he was teaching to do what I did, which we'll talk about a little later. I might as well talk about it now. <laughs> I chose, in the end, I just chose, my choice was to choose love over violence. I've been choosing violence all of my life, and it hadn't done me any good at all. It hadn't changed my life, it hadn't improved my life, the vengeance didn't make me feel better. And there was no peace in my life. And that's what I yearned for since I was a child, basically, since I've been put in that place, in the training camp. I wanted something better, but I didn't know how that was going to be possible for me. I just couldn't see how that was possible. But I had a feeling it was possible. So how did I do that? I come across a person called Jesus in the first century, which is standing right next to me here today, same person. But he was so different. He was different than everybody else at that time. He displayed such an amount of love inside of him. So it just permeated out of him. And it really hit me because I was open to that at that stage. I was open to wanting something different. I didn't want what the world was delivering. I could feel that in him. And I wanted to, it was just very curious at first. Like he was so different and it didn't bother him about how others felt in the world and opposing him. I was very intrigued by him. Even with the world the way it was, he was still able to still stand his ground and deliver such beautiful things he was saying that were touching my heart, except I wouldn't let anybody know that that was happening for me, so I was still holding my position of centurion and hard ass, basically. I didn't want anybody to know that I was having these softer feelings. Before that time, there was no belief in love in that world. There was no, like, the gods that were around in that world that were spoken of were not much different than the people I grew up with. 
the Romans, they were just as bad. There was a little fear and there was a lot of violence. It was the same feeling they had about gods. So there was no concept of love. There was no myth, no misinformation about love. There's no fanfare about love like there is since that time. The world has lived in that fanfare of what love is and made all these different concepts about love. I had none of that at that stage. So it was quite clear. It was actually easy to see in that way, the distinction between the one and the other. And so that gave me some faith that it was real, that something could happen here. And it was happening for me already inside my heart, quietly. I didn't want to let anybody know about it. But it was actually real for me. We'll get a bit more into that as we go. So what creates a lack of faith in God's love? The hurt self does not believe in God's love. The hurt self believes its fears and its pains. It believes its fears and its pains are its reality. It believes it's bad, it believes it's wrong, it believes it's defective. The hurt self cannot feel God's love. Sorry, God's truth there, which is associated with God's love. It can't feel this because of the error that's inside of itself. It believes these things about itself that aren't actually true. And while it's got all these errors in it, God's truth cannot enter it. And God's love cannot enter it. It's God's truth and love cannot enter a place that's opposing to what God's truth and love is. And all these things are errors. They're stuck in the hurt self. The facade self wants love from everybody else other than God. This is another thing that creates a lack of faith in God is the facade. The facade self, the adult-like self, believes that the hurt self, which is the childlike self, needs protection from its feelings and pain. I believe that's the answer to, to keep the hurt, the hurt away, just to create a facade to try and avoid the pain, avoid the pain. It's almost like throwing a kid in a dungeon and just not wanting to hear from it, not caring about it. Whenever it cries, it puts another facade on it. Shut up. Don't want to feel you. Don't want to hear you. The facade self believes that the way to help the hurt self is to feel good, is to get love. The, sorry? The facade self believes that the way to help the hurt self feel good is to get love elsewhere. And what have we learned about that this week? How do we do that one, Lani? Even though we're a small audience, we'll use that one. <laughs> we just run from one addiction to the next addiction. Yeah, like we just find a, addictions to feel good. Yeah, like in an absolute frenzy, you know, just where can I get it? And, mm. yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we don't have we're to We're quite feel. used to that method, aren't we? Mm. So there we go. The facade self creates addictions to meet its erroneous conceptions. We're never going to find faith. The only faith we have in that system is a faith in addictions. We don't have any faith in love or any faith in God's love in particular. Yes, sorry, yeah. Catherine? Sorry, can I just go back to the hurt self again? Yeah, sure. Um, it is the hurt self that will first feel God's love, though, isn't it? Not the facade self? It's the real self. That will feel God's the love. The real self yeah. feels God's love. Yeah, you need to experience the hurt self first to feel the real self, and the real self can have a real experience with God. Thank you. Yeah. I'm correct on that. Is that correct? Just double checking here. <laughs> yeah, Anto? I could add to that to say the real self is full of errors about itself. That's why it can't. It can't experience, God's love can't experience a place where error exists. It needs to have the truth already there. Yeah. So in your real self, is there a part that may be unharmed that then does want to feel and receives God's love initially as a first beginning? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And in your first century of life, when did you receive God's love and you knew that you had actually received it? Um, I don't think I did on earth, but I learned some things about God some truths about God and started seeing some things that gave me some trust that there's something might be real here. I need to go and test those things. Yeah. It wasn't until later in the spirit world where I started to have some faith in God's love. The pe what I got told didn't seem like even the truth. I was quite angry when I ended up in the spirit world because it felt like it was all just bullcrap. And it took me a lot of years to work through a lot of my anger about a lot of things. And then to have some more experiences come to me as well from people that were teaching me earlier when I was on earth. 
And then when I started ex experimenting with those things, they're telling me I had faith again because I saw them again, and, but, and they were somewhere, I was somewhere. And I could also determine now the difference between the feeling coming from them was still a beautiful feeling, where there's other people that were coming to me that had, um, trying to manipulate me, these people weren't. So I was starting to discern, discerning what love was in that stage. Basically re-educating myself, I guess, if you'd like to say. Had a lot of damage to deal with before that. Yeah. Jules? Connie, why do you think that your soul, when you were listening to Jesus talk, mm -hmm. was soft enough to, was it always soft throughout all the torture that you went through and the desensitising, it was always there? Or, I don't know. Did it, you know? <laughs> I know you don't, like, it's my soul. I know, I know <laughs> that's I know, true. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll yeah. tell you about it if I can. Um, uh, we'll go through that a little bit as we go, oh, okay. but I'll also just say a little bit about it now. Yeah. I did have an experience of love earlier in my life. Like in the first five years, I did have some parents that did have some kind feelings towards me. And that's, what it, that's the biggest difference, I feel, that changed me. That just having that little experience, that tiny experience of it, had that little spark still alive somewhere inside of me. And to, to know it, to start off with, if I didn't have that, like a lot of the other people around me in that time when I was in my 20s, like it, when Jesus was speaking, didn't even have that experience. So they wouldn't, they, it's hard to see the comparisons, I guess, when you've had a little bit of something, then you lost it completely, then you see a little bit of it again. Yeah. It comes all oh, here, it comes back quite, like, very curious, like, what is that feeling? That's, and it starts to be um, really stirring the pot, I guess. Yeah. I wondered if that's what it was, if there was some sort of type of love back in your early childhood before you were Yeah, just a taken. little bit of it, particularly my father, actually. Yeah, he ended up dying, coming to try and get me out of there. there a lot of, he just couldn't stand for that, that event happening to me, even at the expense of his own life. There's a lot of love coming to me from him, even though I couldn't see each other, there's still a feeling. Let's move on. Um, what are we up to? So, when did faith in God's love disappear? Does anybody kind of know? Do I have a clue? I'll just throw one up. Yes, Catherine? It disappeared when we became hurt, when we were uh, abused or whatever. Yeah, spot on. Yeah, that's the right conception, isn't it? As soon as we were incarnated into the parents' body, we started taking on their feelings about the whole world, about their feelings, about everything, really. And they started damaging our soul straight away. So when, so also when, also when um, we have that hurt inside of ourselves, we start to create a facade. We start taking on the world's beliefs about God then. Like we have our parents' beliefs at the very beginning, straight away. And as we start growing up, we started, there's already damage there. And this is the potential for having a, a relationship with God is quite small, but when we start finding out the world's beliefs about God, which is quite huge, it starts almost reinforcing that feeling and it just potentially just wipes out the chance of having a relationship with God because you become so reinforced about all the errors about God and there's no possibility of love at that stage once the facade starts taking over and controlling. Yes, Lani? So what's that... Little, even though you can feel all the worlds, you can feel all the hurt and the, the facade, there's still that little part inside that it's kind of like this bit of sand inside that you know won't go away, and you kind of know that it's something more, you don't know what it is. Is, is that something to do with, I don't know, the real self or something reminding you that? It's, I'm still here, even though I'm underneath all of this hurt. Maybe you just don't believe the bullshit as much as I, I don't know. Yeah. It's just there's a desire, I mean, just a little desire to find out a bit more about the truth. It's a big thing, that. It's very, very strong, your desire. Yeah. It's massively strong. Yeah. It's a great quality to have. Yeah. And it will take you to where 
where you want to go with it. If it's a loving desire, like a lo- desire for wanting to know more about love and want to have more truth in your life, it's going to lead you to the right places and welcome here today. <laughs> so how do I build real faith then? After all this damage. I need to confront and deconstruct the facade about God's love. That's one thing we're going to need to do. We've covered earlier on, on day two, the adult uh, facade, but we're going to sort of focus on, well, we're not going to sort it, we are going to focus on faith, about deconstructing the um, facade of what to do with faith, do with God. So how do we deconstruct the facade with God? What are our current feelings about God, in other words? Anybody have some current feelings? About, you feel they're out of, like, in your facade? Um, Kel? I don't connect with God while I'm in my facade. I don't feel I know him. So what do you feel about God? Oh, what do I feel about yeah. God? Um, that he's not doing enough for me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Anybody else? Yep. Did you hang? Um, sometimes I feel like I'm not even worthy of God's love mm-hmm. at times. Yeah. Justin? I feel quite annoyed at times because I feel like God's just hanging back. <laughs> yep. Like, and not. What's there? Coming to me uh-huh. to meet me where I am. Although that's just that's yep, bit, totally that's, facade. That's what I that's yeah. what I feel anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Oh, it's not great, but that's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, what emotions are related to the facade with God? What do we feel about God in our in our facade, Jules? Well, uh, when I'm in the facade with God, I tend to believe. What I was taught through the, through my religion, you know, that he is punishing, mm. you know, that I see his laws are punishing and uh-huh. he's wrathful. And it's deconstructing the emotions that are in error that I still hold through, you know, through the uh, introduction to religion and how they have taught God. So that's... They're still pretty strong, huh? Um, <laughs> Do you know when I'm in the trough going down with my relationship with God, they're pretty good there, and then I've got to do the climb back up. So they've got a good old addiction going on with God there, make me feel good, then I'll forget about you. Yeah, well, it's more when I want to go up, I start wanting to believe the truths, and I go to the truth, you know, the how he cares for me and loves me. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean, that when I start getting out of the trough and going back up right. again. But when I'm down there... I feel all of those gotcha. punishing yeah. emotions mm. that I know are fake. Yes, yeah, so there's just no faith in God at all at that stage. That's it, yeah, yeah at that stage, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the trough is like this, it's up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what emotions drive addictions with God? What do we want from God? Catherine? We want him to fix all our injuries and we yeah. don't want to look at them. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lani, is right next to you. Just want him to do all the work, just take yeah, it away, definitely. get a magic <laughs> wand. Yeah. <laughs> Someone over the side was there. Anto, was it? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, I just want God to do it my way. You know, I want mm. him to see it how I, my view of love and. Yeah. Um, which is not love, but... It's like to try and control God and push yeah. him around a bit. Yeah. yeah. Do it all for us. Yeah, these are pretty common, aren't they? Yeah. How do you think God feels about that? I reckon it's going to work? <laughs> Fat chance. So wanting to blame God for the problems in our life, which is quite interesting in a way, isn't it? In the facade, we don't even really believe in God. Yet we want God to fix everything up. It's the good old facade is so logical. <laughs> so we end up having addictions with spirits who we feel like God. Why do we do that? 
Carol, <laughs> tentatively put your hand up. Um, I'm just desperate and trying to feel good, and I mm. don't, you know, know what to do next. Mm. And spirits are gonna. How long is it gonna take to get a feeling for spirit? Make you feel good? Yeah. Pretty quick. Yeah. How long is it gonna take to get a good feeling exactly. from God? <laughs> yeah, a but, long time. And uh, how much work's involved in that, both of them? Yeah. Mm. So we're not going to get a lot of faith happening there, are we? We're going to get a, faith, a lot of faith in addictions in the end. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the experience of my life in the first century in regards to deconstructing the facade. Um, 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 um. I guess, Jules, what you were saying before, like I was going to be about that. Um, my feelings probably maybe a year before a lot of things happened for me I was just getting I was getting tired of my life I was getting um, there's no satisfaction the satisfaction had gone off a long the vengeance feelings were you know done and busted and hadn't done anything still had a lot of hurt inside of myself and a lot of um, despondency about I guess life I started becoming, becoming sick of what I was doing I had no desire for doing what I was doing anymore um, so a lot of things started happening. Oops, excuse me for touching my mic. Um, yes, yeah, so I started becoming sick of my life and just like sort of sad, I guess. I started feeling a little bit of that, I guess, in that time. And we got end up getting by chance what you two would call law of attraction, which you'd be correct. Um, getting stationed to Jerusalem, which happened to be where someone was talking about a lot of these things. A lot of other things started happening in my life then too. There's more emotional stir-up going on as well. I'd, when I just got there too, I'd, um, I'd met a lady that actually touched me. It was when I was trying to fix up a wound in my arm. I was sitting in a tavern. And so the first reaction is to just take a swipe. It's just a, the feeling coming from her was just gentle. I'd never experienced that from a woman before. Usually my experience with women were during rapes actually, and she's trying to fight me. This woman just had it, and then the look in her eyes was gentle too. It wasn't like a um, a fear look that I'm used to seeing, and this was, that was that stirred a lot in me as well. And the touch was a letter. I actually let her fix that up. It was very like I was a little bit scared, I guess you could say that too. Um, having a, a gentle feeling happening to my skin, it's always been violence. Yeah. Um, and my mother also came and visited then too. I hadn't seen her for twenty something years, twenty three years or something like that bit more than that. She found out through lots of stuff that was going on as well that was separate to that, that I was in that place and she came and visited and that stirred a lot up in me too. I'd completely forgotten about her just about but then there she is in my face again. It brings back a lot of my childhood feelings about um, the little experiences of love that I did have or there was something different and there is something I can experience and a lot of things are getting stirred up at that stage. And also of course going along and just being a crowd controller if you like at talks that um, AJ was doing, just a lot of people doing talks in streets and um, he was gathering a big crowd. We had to go and um, just be there just in case anything got out of, out of shape. But listening to him too, that was stirring a lot of things up for me too. So I started, I started breaking down a facade, if you like, of what, I, what, I, what, what my world, with my, my family, my abusive, violent family, which is a Roman army, told me I was. Yeah. I started not believing in that anymore. I started seeing I was something different than what I was told I was because I was having a different experience inside of myself of what I was told I was. I no longer wanted to be that anymore. So I guess that is what started break deconstructing my facade. Yeah. Jane? Connie, do you remember what Jesus was saying at the time to you? Like what what he was talking about to the crowd? Like, do, do you recall as yet? It's like it's, um, what he was saying, he was saying it direct to me, it felt like. He was looking, it felt like what he was saying related exactly to what, I, like it was almost like he was talking to me directly. That's because it was so powerful. You and could was, feel it at a heart level? Yeah, that's like what I mean, yeah. Really, it just yeah. felt like he was talking to my heart and just almost felt a little bit, scary that 
someone could see me deep inside, but he's talking to everybody with the symbols. People have, people have similar issues back then, so yeah, it's pretty common. So, that, but it that, felt like it was direct to me. It was just really, really hitting me. And because he was at one with God at that time, mm. yeah, at one. So wow, to be in that presence. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to hit you. Hit you, yeah. Unless you're just a stone cold person like most of us. There. Jules? You know, it was interesting when you were talking about it and you had the wound and the woman came with gentleness. Just the power of love. Exactly. In that story. This is know, the biggest thing. This is what. Was, yeah, I'm the power. I doubt it so much, the power yeah. of love, but here I'm listening to somebody and their life and just what the power of love ended up doing that changed you and ended up in the 36th sphere or something. That saved me many times in my life. Yeah. Like from when I was young, having that little experience saved me later on to know yeah. what the feeling was like to save me later on when I was in the spirit world that saved me and kept me yeah, going. Yeah, that drop. Yeah. 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 Like Hansel and Gretel finding, yeah, you know. There was another kid that was in that same place as me, had the same experience, except he was put there by his parents. His parents didn't want him. Mm. He was rejected from birth. Yeah. And I only spoke to him a year ago. He's still in the hells because he just never had the experience of love. Yeah. That would have helped him a lot. Mm. So it, people, I, I can't even emphasize the power of, like, love. They just yeah, crumbs, Just even the smallest they? bit yeah. of genuine love. Yeah. And the gentleness of the touch. Yeah, with, with care and compassion, not wanting anything from it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so? So, Courtney, when you were, you, you could feel that you, you could receive love from another person, what made you stretch to the possibility that it could be love from, a, from God? From, is it just because of AJ's teachings or what made you make that leap? Because faith assumes that you've got a belief about God or you know, um, there has to be a trigger point for the faith to, to commence. So I need to have some experiences yeah. to, 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 to try and I guess to experiment with it. So we'll get on to those. So basically, they have to choose to have experience that's going to challenge our current addictions and fears and beliefs about God. That's what we're going to need to do to build faith in God. Or we de and deconstructing the facade is going to facilitate that. So how else do I build faith in God, real faith? I need to allow the hurt self to grieve the loss of faith in God's love. Hurt self has not felt a real loving relationship. Not even from ourselves. Or we build a facade, we're trying to say no to the like, just don't want to know about it. Just don't want to know about our real selves, don't want to know the hurt that's in our real selves. The facade's there to try and avoid it and get away from it, thinks that's the way it works, but it doesn't. It's just rejecting our hurt self, basically. The hurt self does not believe God is loving. Why is that? Jane? It's because it's never felt love. I feel <laughs> That's one of them, yeah. But, yeah. It's never had an experience with God at all, has it? Yeah. Justin? Yeah. The evidence in God's universe is that love doesn't exist, mm, generally. What it, yeah. what, what's the first bit of evidence you'll have about love in your life experience? Well, pseudo-love, let's call it. <laughs> we can go to somebody else. Anybody else have an idea of that one? Um, go to um, Bruce. Your mother's touch or something like that? Mothers and fathers, yeah. Mothers and fathers. Our first experience of someone that's supposed to love us or supposed to teach us about love. But have a, you usually have a child for that reason, isn't it? To teach it. It doesn't happen, generally. So it never has the experience. Never knows what love, real love feels like. It's going to be impossible for the child. It's, it's 
off, it's like, yeah, off, um, what's the word? Just off to a bad start, basically. If it's already starting with this error is all about love, God's love can never get in there. God's love never has a chance. So it's never going to know what real love feels like. These are quite sad feelings too, like when you start letting yourself feel about them deeply. They're very touching, sad feelings. And I never really, this hurt child is never going to really know who God is. If no one's ever taught it who God is, no one's ever taught it the beautiful qualities that God has, they could potentially have a life of never having that experience. And that is really sad. To know that, and eventually when it does find out, to know that that was available all the time for it, but no one ever, no one ever knew about it, no one ever told anybody about it, no one ever told the child about it, or how to even experience itself with God, or what it had to do from its condition. Oh, another one for me. Experience of my life, first century, related to grief of loss, faith in God's love. I guess what we've been talking about, um, this is another one, same as an addition to your question. Oh, uh, yeah, what I said I'd talk about. Um, when I was taken away to that place, the military training camp, um, I didn't know what I'd done. Like, we, People busted into our place. I thought they were going to take my sisters and my mum. And then they took me. I didn't understand that. And I was terrified. And just for days and days and weeks and weeks and then into months, just that the, um, feeling of not knowing what I'd done wrong not understanding and just hoping that someone would come and get me. It's just this hope that one day someone's going to come and get me. I thought maybe it's just for a little while, maybe I'm just being punished for something I've done. I didn't know what it was, but I just maybe that's what's happening. And while all this violence was going on towards me in that place, I just kept on just hoping, I guess, that someone would come and get me. And you know when you hang on to hope for a long time, it starts to fade and drift away a little bit. And there's one feeling I did not want to feel in particular, I was avoiding it at all costs as a thought that I would not allow into my head or my heart. And that feeling was that no one's come to save me. No one's taken me out of here. And that's, I guess, where I lost any hope that there's love still available. And any love for me. It seemed like the opposite was for me. Violence. It's going to be pretty hard to feel love in that space, isn't it? And that's what you feel about yourself. And the environment is now telling me that constantly every single day. So, Brendan, you have a question? Yeah, your dad came to get you. Um, mm -hmm. Was that loving or unloving, considering... I may do the same thing for my kids, but he left the wife and sisters behind, um, possibly knowing what might happen to them. They did have that feeling and they didn't want him to go, but they were more scared about themselves. My mum had no love for me, less love for me than her own fear. So was it loving for him to yes. come to get you? Yep. I feel so anyway. Maybe I'm invested in that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just... I was just wondering about the other bloke. We're standing up for truth. It's not, would it, does it feel wrong to take someone's child out of their home and take them away for unloving purposes? I'm just reflecting on what AJ has said and I haven't grasped it. Um, you know, you don't, don't interfere. Uh, I'm just a bit confused on... Can I interject? Yep. <laughs> Brendan, I think this is a bit of baggage from last night's commentary that uh, you you haven't felt about properly, and so you're trying to bring it 
you, you're trying to work it out in this setting and I think the two, the two issues are quite unrelated. The example in Cornelius's life and the example in yours. And I'll be happy to chat to you after if you'd like a bit of clarity on that. But I feel there's some feelings that you just need to feel about the <coughs> comments you received last night in the group and historically about your kids. Yeah. Right, I might just keep moving on because we've got a short time today. So how do I build real faith? <laughs> Another way. Another ways we can do this. We've done two of the ways already. So you need to lovingly reeducate the hurt self about God's real character. We learned a lot of false things about God's real character. Now we need to re-educate the hurt child about what the truth is about God. If we're going to have a relationship with God, and we're going to learn, we're going to end up building faith in that relationship that God can actually love us. So hurt self never experienced a loving parent. So we now are going to have to be that loving parent and teach it the truth. The hurt self does not know what a loving parent feels like. It's never had the experience yet. It's felt what a parent that has erroneous beliefs about love feels like. Erroneous beliefs about love don't contain love. The hurt self never had a parent who taught it the truth. Like I was saying before, it taught it errors. So we're going to need to re-educate our hurt self about how God really is. So how would we do that? Lani? Um, um, start by educating our hurt self how what, what God is is good and God has only love for us and only wishes to you know, have a relationship with us. He really wishes to. Just, yeah, it's trying to find some truthful information to give it rather than false information the world's been giving us. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. <laughs> yes, Catherine, yeah. <laughs> um, we need to start loving our hurt child ourselves mm -hmm. to show the hurt child what love e our love is mm, by before and um, before it can feel God's love we have to change what it was taught yeah by our demonstration of loving it yes yeah No one else did this in our childhood, but we can now do it in our adulthood. It's the most loving thing you can do for a child, by the way, too, is to teach it about God's laws, and about God's character, about God's um, qualities. Oh, there we go. So, what are some of the qualities and of God, or personality, or character? Any one of those? What are they? Yeah. Anybody? Um, Jules? And then... Well, love. Loving, being a loving parent. Mm -hmm. Caring. Yeah. Um, there for you. Yes, interested in you. Yeah, interested in you. Mm -hmm. um, it's all right. Um, if you I th yeah. Um, I've only <laughs> got good. to the... Uh, that's good. <laughs> Is that... Yeah. Brendan? Perhaps teaching by example, um, children. So, if you're a good example, then they'll. they'll this is just up. God's qualities at the moment. So, God's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, perhaps I'm still stuck back. Yeah, it's all right. No worries. <laughs> Let's go over to Jane. God is um, honest. Mm -hmm. um, ch oh, no, maybe not. I won't say that one. Uh, I feel like God is childlike, but yeah, I feel very. like I don't have that quality. Yeah, that's all right. No, we're just talking about what we've uh, started to observe about God's call, um, character and quality. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely on honesty. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're going to try and be, um, work 
to being like, I guess, or develop ourselves in to help our, our child. As we keep going, we'll find out a bit more about this. Um, Nikki? Uh, all, every one of us is attributes of our real self to an infinite degree. So everything that's within all of us, like our own real selves, just to an infinite degree. Yeah, we don't know our real selves. To a certain selves, extent. Yeah. But, we can find a lot about God just in our world, though, too. We can find out like about God's the best plumber in the world. Like your heart's been beating for how long, and how long's it beat for? And never stops, never needs refueling, never misses a beat. If it does miss a beat, you're in trouble. Yeah. But how good a pump is that? God's the most fantastic landscape gardener I've ever seen. When you travel around and see things, God's the best builder. Like you've ever seen some of the stuff that God's created, like a universe. <laughs> That's pretty cool things like this and like when I was a kid I remember seeing monkeys and I thought they're the funniest thing out like God's created all these little funny characters like in, in, in the environment too they all not only do a job but they make me laugh so like God's got a funny personality oh, no, I'm sorry a, a yeah humorous personality as well so we can find all these things out in our environment we can see them quite easily even when I drew the map the other day of the two roads, you remember they were coming down and one road side of the road leads to um, addictions and fear and the other one's to God's love and truth. God made it pretty easy. Down here is just an intersection, it's a teen intersection. 50% chance you'll get it right. There's no flyovers, there's no crossovers, there's no tunnels, there's no bridges, there's no on-ramps, no off-ramps. Just two choices, that way or that way. God's very simple in the way of making things easy for us. Yeah. There's lots we can find out about God when we start discovering. Yeah. God's really sharing because Very. he's trying to teach us to have the same thing that it has and what yeah. it knows. Mm -hmm. uh, Carol? Um, God's really adventurous. Yep. Well, you said it, I think, curious and um, creative. Very creative. The ultimate creative. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Reverse, and then we'll go to not your order. Oh, yeah. Did you have a question? Yep. Yes. Well, I'd answer. say God's probably the most humblest of all. Absolutely. Yeah. It's also very, these are some of the qualities that we noticed about God that we're going to have to be with our child is very patient and very wanting to have a relationship with them, as in wanting to know the hurt that's in them, as you would with a child, wanting to have like um, compassion for their hurt as well, not try and put down the hurt as nothing, it is not important. Yeah. So these are the qualities that are going to help us a lot with um, our relationship with our hurt self that God has for us as well. We need to choose our will in harmony with love. It's going to be a big thing, isn't it? At the moment we're choosing our will in harmony with error. We're choosing addictions to try and feel good. My facade is trying to do that to get away from this hurt self. But that 50% chance we had, we used the will in a different way towards love for ourselves. How do you do this? Jane? Um, develop courage, I feel, for me to start to do this, yeah, feel that I've got the courage in, within me to, do to make the first step. To yeah. be loving, to use my will. Uh huh. Jules? Um, I feel that it's using my will to discover uh, the truth of God, the truth about God, rather than using my will to discover not the truths of God. So to take that turn to the right and go, this is where I'm going to go and to have the dedication to keep going, mm -hmm. to keep that, that desire, you know, even when you go down in the trough to know, okay, there's, it's going to go up again. So to have that will and desire mixed with the courage to keep going. Mm. We're going to have to get rid of some of our facade, aren't we, to do all this oh, yeah. as well? We're going to have to look at, like we've learned about, how we use our time yeah. as well. We have to be starting having real personal discovery about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So how do we build real faith? Another one is embrace emotional experience of God. As we start to go through our hurt, and as we start to discover more about God and wanting to feel some of our hurt, we're going to have a lot more experiences or possibilities of experiences with God, as in, did I write that up there? Yeah, the feeling, the emotions you'll feel. As in, you'll have, like, say before, when I was talking about some of the things I've noticed about God, there's a lot of joy feelings, and embrace those feelings about the character of God. A lot of trust in God, like these laws are set up for love. God's trying to, this God, this God's trying to lead me towards love. Oh, huh, how about that? And so having those the, the real genuine feelings about what God's trying to do, like what the God's real personality and character, have it emotionally, and you start having some trust then, at least. Trust that this is going to be an okay process. I'm not being led up the garden path. All the laws I've started to discover all have love in them. They're all leading to, they're all loving ways and loving reasons. They're all trying, even the worst person, the worst experience in the world is in the place that's going to help them lead towards love because they're always trying to guide you towards love. It's not having the experience that that's actually like emotional experience that's real. You'll know and begin to trust in God's love again because you'll start to feel it. This is usually when we're going through the process and we do start having, start allowing ourselves to feel a hurt child and letting ourselves feel that. And then God can help us once you start feeling our real, not our real feelings at the moment, at that time. And we get into our, our real self, God can help. Love can come in in that stage from God. We want to discover our real self and go, let ourselves feel those hurt feelings and block our real selves. That's when we can have a real experience with God. This is where faith starts happening. Real faith. So, faith is a potential of the soul that must be developed. It's not already there. Our real self has the ability to now develop real faith in God. As we get work through all those two issues, the, the facade and the um, hurt self, the allowance of each to be experienced. And the real self can then be experienced. God created our soul with the potential to have faith in God. It wasn't there when you were born. Something you need to build on. Faith in God is not a normal state, but it must be developed. This is because a relationship with God is a choice of our soul based will, as we've talked about a fair bit, Mary talked about in the first day. Are you just Justin there? This is something that I've been really confused about mm -hmm. in the past because I never understood that, like, like faith, for example, it is a potentiality that mm. has to be developed, like desires and mm. all that sort of thing. I just thought some people had it and some people didn't. You desires you do have. Yeah, sorry, but I never understood that they're things to be developed, like through the use of our will. Yeah. Like I thought some people just knew what their desires were or just had what I would term natural faith. Mm. Um, and I just went, oh, look, I, I guess I don't have that, but okay. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is really exciting for me. Cause yeah, you've got to put the effort in, don't you, with these things. You've got to want them and then actually start doing things to get them. But I feel like I can do that. that. Yeah. Now that I know that it's possible, yeah. I just never thought it was yeah. possible before. A lot of times we feel that we're defective, don't we? feel like I can't, I've got no faith, so it must just not be in me. I yeah. was born. Yeah, it's not the truth. Money? I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> Thanks. Um, going on from what Justin said, he's saying, well, what I'm feeling like some people just don't even want to know about God. No, that's all, they're allowed to not know about God. And yet some people God doesn't mind just either. do. <laughs> yeah. So is it not that the, you know, oh, I don't know. Like my sister, for instance, she's got no desire to know about God at all, and I think, well, how come some people do and some people don't? Just from the damage. Oh, damage. Yeah, the, the, the damage at the very beginning of your life and different personalities that receive the same experience differently as well. Like you can have the same mother and father, but your character and personality is different than your sister totally. So are you saying if we're not damaged, we're not going to desire God? No, you will desire God when you're not damaged. 
Oh, now I'm really confused. <laughs> if, if we're not damaged, we will desire God? Yeah, that's what we're trying to work back to. That's why there hasn't been a desire in the very, very beginning for God. You have a, a, a curiosity at the moment about God. Yeah. yeah Mary? Can I help clarify a bit, Lani? I think I know what you're asking. You're asking why do some people have seemingly an interest in God and others don't? And Corny's trying to say that it's the damage within us that creates a resistance towards a desire for God. And so this is why we put a lot of emphasis on to the facade and dealing with addictions because these are the things that we've substituted, if you like, for feelings of loss or a lack of love inside of us. But when we get to our real self, there's this natural curiosity that has an interest in God, which has to be developed, though, just as Justin said. And that's a, that then becomes an extension of our will. Do we want to know or do we not want to know? But often all of our, well, always all of our resistances to God come from the damage that we're holding on to and not choosing to feel. Does that make sense? No, nope, Jesus is disagreeing with me. Go ahead, baby. I'll switch you. Yeah. And so this section, and Connie's trying to share with you some basic truths, and that is that faith is not a given in your soul. So as Justin said, you're not guaranteed to have faith in God. It's something that is a potential quality of your soul that you can develop, right? What you're asking is not about faith, it's about will. But why does a person, some people have the will to, to develop faith in God, while other people seem to have not the will to develop faith in God? And the, the reality is it's because they are allowed to use their will however they want. So there are plenty of people in the sixth sphere of the spirit world that have gotten rid of all of their injuries. There's no, there's hardly any hurt, there's no hurt left in them except perhaps you could say one set of hurts and that is the hurt associated with God. But there's no other hurts associated in, in them, but they still don't have a will developed to actually get to know God. And the first human couple, Ammon and a man, were given the offer to get to know God and they refused it and they had no injuries whatsoever and yet they still chose to refuse it at the time because they thought they knew better. So. So I can't agree that it's a given that you will have a will to develop God once you've got rid of all your injuries, because that's not true. It is to do with how you use your will. And, and I feel quite strongly that a lot of people still don't understand that. They, they sort of all, they, they go, oh, how do I make my sister have a will to, to want to know about God? You can't. We well, can't because it's just no, no desire at all. Yeah, and even if, you, even if she lets go all of her injuries, right, she might not still have a will to find out about God. However, one thing that the guys are pointing out to you is this. Once you've got rid of all of your injuries, there's this natural curiosity about everything in the universe. And it's highly likely after you start investigating everything in the universe, because you're now curious about it, that you'll find that there must be, and logically must be, a person who created this universe that you could also develop some interest in. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. But, but that is not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee that that's the case. But it is highly likely, because the real self is curious about all truth, including truth about how did the universe get here. You, if you talk to a little child, one of the first questions they ask you is, how did that get here, mummy? Or how did they get here, daddy? How did this get here, daddy? And then there's a long stream of that. How did that? Then, then, I, then you say it's part of the universe. How did the universe get here, daddy? <laughs> or mummy, right? There's a natural curiosity to ask that question, right? And then, of course, the majority of people say, I don't know. Or if they believe in God, they might say, oh, God created it. But when you say, I don't know, the little child will say, why don't you know, Daddy? <laughs> you know, they'll even be curious to find out why you don't know. It seems to them to be such an important question. And, and this is what a person does. Once you've gotten rid of the, quite a lot of the facade and the injuries, you will naturally start asking some of these questions. But there's still not a guarantee that you'll use your will to actually desire God and receive God's love. Right? So it's, but, but it's highly likely at that point that you probably will. 
Thank you. I'll double that thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome answer. So finally, faith, I don't know if it's finally, faith is developed through having an emotional experience with God. It's the only way you're going to build faith. And you'll be building it upon experience, upon experience, and upon experience, and upon experience. And it has to be your experience, not someone else's experience. It has to be emotional as well. So embrace these emotional experiences. Alrighty, conclusion. Reversal of our lack of faith must proceed in the opposite order it was created. The adult facade placed a layer of resistance to our childhood experiences. The adult facade must be experienced and deconstructed. Our lack of faith in love of the God variety and our diminished ability to trust in our ability to be able to cope with our negative emotional experiences has created a world based on error, faith based on faith in error and addictions, not truth or love. The potential of faith in God was diminished because of our childhood experiences. The childhood hurt must be released before we can have truly, truly have faith. This makes our little hurt child inside of us even more sad as it seems destined to never be found again living a life like this. Well, the facade wants to keep that hurt away. Faith is a potential of the soul that must be developed, not automatically there, which we just found out about before. <laughs> I'm just going to give you a little quick, um, what would I call it, a visual analogy, just to wrap up what's written on there, just in case you don't understand it. So, imagine my shirt is my facade. Got that? That's part of the analogy. My t-shirt is my hurt self. My skin is my real, my real self. So how, you, how am I going to get to see my skin? Where am I going to start? Let's have a look. Let's put this up here. Justin, where am I going to start? You've got to take off your facade. Yes, yeah, so I've got to start removing the facade. Probably this is not a strip show. <laughs> <laughs> and as I start to work on my facade, it starts breaking apart, and I start exposing something. What is it? My hurt self. As I want to start experiencing this hurt self now, I start, ex start letting myself feel the hurt, what am I going to experience then? We don't know. <laughs> the real self. And when I get to experience my real self, I can have a relationship with God. I can experience some of God's love in this stage. Then when I experience some of God's love at last, what am I going to end up with? <laughs> Faith. <laughs> so there you go. Do you understand the process? Yeah. And we can, we're going to repeat this process too. <laughs> as, we, as we go through our life, there's another facade we've got to, we'll find out about. We'll start working through that, expose our hurt self. Once you go work through that again, we'll find our real self and we'll end up, finding, have, we'll end up having a relationship with God and well, that, that process is the only place you'll have a relationship with God, the real self. Yeah, yep, repetition. All right, guys, I'm done now. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'm glad the props held up. <laughs> Thanks for your company. And Mary will be coming up next with strengthening our will to receive God's love. <laughs>